was fouled here. I think maybe the ref has given advantage, but you know it gets a little clip there. But you'd expect the play to be allowed go on mm. and let him finish the move. And again, it, it calls into question. I think this uh, silly rule about you know you see the referee with his hand up there. The silly rule of the advantage rule. How a player will realise he has the advantage or not with the referee 30 yards behind him, I don't know. But I think it's you know. Um, this, this was a situation, Joe got a chance here, hit the, the butt of the upright and then Johnny then failed to, you know, failed to pick it up. Might have got a point at that stage and you see how hard Kilkenny walked there. That's TJ Reid who was playing up left half forward, picks the ball back up in his own, you know, 13 metre line. And great score here from Kilkenny. Henry Sheffield under severe pressure but Killian Buckley, was, he was waiting for that pass for a long number of time and nobody picked him up. I think Damien Hayes could have come back. But that point raised the siege. Because Kenny mm. were really under pressure at that stage. That point raised the siege a bit. And, um, you know, this decided the match really. There's, you know, a bit of an altercation here, if you can call it that. I think JJ Delaney held Cyril Dan for a while and he flicked back. And the referee mm. had no option but to send him off, really. I mean, I think Barry Kelly was right on the spot. Um, you, see the, just, you see the flick back. High right, and I think Cyril can have no complaints. And it's a pity because I think he was probably Galway's top forwards and he, he was bringing the game to Kilkenny at that point. Once yeah. that happened, the game was over. Frustration probably showing there, was yeah, it? Yeah, frustration, I suppose. Ultimately, um, you know, it cost his team. We've seen an incident like that a few yeah. years ago. But I suppose today, the, the big thing for me as well, just touching back on it, Kilkenny's forwards opened up the Galway backs today. Galway's system was built on you know, keeping it nice and tight at the back and I think today we saw space in the Galway backs, we saw them under pressure, they weren't able to you know, come out with as much ball as they did mm. before and that for me ultimately, Kilkenny went about their business, they didn't wait, you know, the yeah. Galway had the measurement prior to that but today I think a few other players that maybe yeah. hadn't have been having yeah. good years up to now really came to the fore, you know, Richie Power picked off a couple of good scores, he got the goal, Owen Larkin picked up a lot of ball, worked very hard and Richie Hogan two great flicks in the first half which led to two points well, and that yeah. was the difference See, as well, Galway's game all year has been lead from the front either play a defensive game lead from the front hold on and then on the break now today was the first day that they were behind at half time deservedly so they could be down a lot more and there, there's a lot of new guys on the team they, they had to go kind of chasing them and as Eddie said then when they did there was terrible gaps at the back yeah. it was their first day really to be under pressure but that's what you're you know when you come up against the best like Kilkenny learned more from the, from the drawing game yeah. the first day without a shadow of a doubt one, one, one big talking point clearly Galway goalkeeper James Cahill got injured do they play him or do they not and that proved to be a huge talking point he was replaced at half time subsequently yeah, definitely a huge talking point. It was, it was all the talks uh, since Friday. And, uh, you know, I think we've seen there, even the doctor seemed to be with him, you know. I suppose maybe they're trying to pump him up a little bit. But um, the very first ball that he had to deal with, and this for me, look, should have been a bread and butter flick up and carry it out. But to see a goalkeeper kicking a ball out like that, it may be, you know, give you, the, you know, was he as confident as he, as he needed to be? And, and even this, you know, this... Look, that could happen to anyone. This wasn't anything to do with the shoulder, but he just slipped there at the real wrong time. And look, he managed to avert the danger. He managed to get it out. You know, I don't think he done anything really wrong today. He didn't. His puck outs were still good, but I suppose for me anyway, you know, the day of, I mean, a dislocated shoulder is a serious injury. Normally, it's could be two months, and we've seen him there afterwards. He was clearly in pain after and that. You, and you could see, you could see him actually at the first clip Eddie, yeah. where he where he kicked the ball out along the line. You could see him grimacing, Grimace, yeah. and, and he was very reluctant to go down to pick it up. So obviously, his shoulder mm. maybe he wasn't able to get you know. To but pick for me, it up I suppose look, in the present day, um, I think playing an injured player, it, you know, it's it's just you know maybe did it did it distract the team a little bit in the build up to the match? They were obviously concerned about him, and I suppose it was just a distraction maybe that Galway didn't need. Um, again, look, James. Would Brian Cody have done that? In your view, it's hard to know. I suppose. Look, we're only here analysing what we see after. Yeah. We have, we have. Well, the, I suppose there's to be fair to call that. And Brian yeah. Cody in Eddie's time played a player too, and they wound up. The thought they were okay, and they wound up having to come off in the last of the match as well. But like, Henry, Henry, yeah, and like you know, yeah, yeah. But you, at this level, at this level, level, if you play an injured player, you would be for out at some stage, right? And, and it was obvious, I think, after the first goal of minutes, that Skehl right. wasn't right, and, and it proved it at half time when he had to be replaced. All right, Cyril, it was 43 minutes before go. We got a point from play. That's, that's not good. Yeah, like in all Ireland final, you'll get chances and you have to be able to take all the chances that comes up to you. Like they did some great hurling, like, they, you know, they got great scores, but they missed kind of vital ones that had dropped them on. This, this is Galway kind of at a good, at a good stretch. Now, Joe is very, very deep. This is probably one, their best score of the day, really. Great passing movement again. Donald back to Hayes. Hayes across to David Burke. And this is their second goal. Mm, but they don't, they don't build on this side. Like, they don't get a chance. Like, Donald did very well. Perfect pass. Hayes looks up. Another perfect pass. Chains ahead. Back in there. Now, there's nothing that Kilkenny defence could do there. They don't build it. Now, here's Joe Cannon coming through here. The ball comes in. Now everyone goes underneath this ball, this ball breaks, breaks out to Cyril Donnan, doesn't get his first touch right, when he doesn't do it. Now Killian Buckley 
did a kind of a rash clearance. He had two, three backs out, but he pucks it out long. There's two goal men underneath here, Ian Latanian catches the ball, goes, plays the goal right, goes back on his left and floats in the ball and just goes wide. Now, there's in a final, you need to be nailing them scores. Yeah. Like, if you're nailing them scores, you really put Kilkenny under pressure. But when you're not, like, you're letting them off the hook and you're going to pay. Don, you felt there were other areas, though, apart from the shooting, that were yeah, going... I, I felt that Galway were, were, were a bit flat, days, and I, I was a bit surprised by their support player. We, we, we showed Damien Hayes on the ball here, you know, passing the ball back. But th there's no movement, I think. It goes back then to Andy Smith, but Tony O'Regan is the receiver, but he's static. And Richie Paul comes from 10, 15 yards behind. He could see what was going to happen, six the ball over the bar. And when you do that to a defence, it's a huge psychological boost yeah. for you. But you could see um, Galway plenty of times... Uh, Tommy Walsh there knock, knock, knocking the ball down, but you know, they were under pressure. Um, no, this is a little pop pass to Owen Larkin. There's three Galway players there, and Niall Dunhu takes him down, like, which to me is, you know, is a silly concession. And in an all out final or any championship match, you have to be very, very tight. Here again, TJ Reid lost his hurley. In, in, in my day, you'd be quite legitimate to pull across the ball, and if you got his foot well, you know, that was a bonus. But he takes him down needlessly when I think Tony O'Gregan was coming in here to pick up the ball. And, no need for it. I know you might say like maybe the game was gone at that stage, but you know you have to have a mindset on the time, like total discipline. And I don't think Galway had it today. You said there you were entitled to pull on it if you got his foot. That was a bonus. Did you mean if you got the ball? <laughs> that was that was Don was trying to put his foot back. <laughs> right. I was the thing, when the person <laughs> la lost the early this and the ball, and he was trying to play the ball on the foot. You're entitled to pull on the ball, and if you hit his foot, Eddie Brennan would know this well, right? Yeah, that was considered a bonus for a but defender. You'd want, you'd, you'd, but you'd you expect to be reasonably close to the ball, though. <laughs> you, no, you needed to hit the ball because if you hit it over the ball, it was a free. It was the same but thing. But what, <laughs> what it highlights, Des, was I suppose today Kilkenny were on the front foot yeah. and. Um, Midfield was a key area as well the, the last couple of days and I think Kilkenny probably balanced that today, you know, yeah. Mick Fenley and Killian Buckley got on top and just meant that, that Galway were giving away a few frees where they had to chase Kilkenny defenders and they were forced to make our forwards and make a decision, do mm. I let him on or do I take him down? And in them cases there were stuff that Galway hadn't been doing all year. All right, pardon me, Noel Hickey, nine medals now yeah. and Henry of course... Yeah, well, Henry, Henry is still the king. King, like, Henry, like, king Henry the Ninth. Yeah, he's still yeah. the king, like a fantastic caller. Like, for, you can't forget, today everyone's on about it, but what about the last day when things are going bad? This guy is unbelievable for the last, you know, number, 10 or 12 years, and like, he does it every day, and when the chips are really down, you know, Eddie knows him better than anyone. He delivers, and he delivers really on the big day. Yeah, huge, huge leadership. Um, I suppose you, you, you take into consideration what he has been through as well with the yeah, injuries, injuries the man has yeah. suffered as well. And just to come back to the last day, I think, you know, Kilkenny may not have been here at the replay were it not for Henry's performance the last day. You know, he pulled him back. You know, there's not enough superlatives to really compliment the man. Um, what a player. But I think it's his leadership as well. You know, he, he, he just... And he has an enthusiasm, a bit like Brian Cody. He has a fierce enthusiasm for Hurland. Hurland is everything to him. And I think the rest of the players feed off that as well. But uh, look, what an achievement himself in all Hickey. Nine All-Ireland medals, it's massive. Eight's not bad, though, Eddie, in fairness. No, but nine is huge. <laughs> nine, is, nine, nine is special. But you have to say, Eddie, Eddie's all back. It's all about, back it's all about the team now at the moment. Yeah. And I think, I think when you look back, at, uh, you, you said about when you look back at this year, right, OK, it was his performance in the, in the drawing game, yeah. really. Kilkenny wouldn't have won without that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, that was the, um, you know, that, that showed Henry because, you know, when the chips were down, he, he, he puts his yeah. shoulder to wheel as well as being a, a fantastic artist, but he was absolutely fantastic as a worker. OK. All right, then well, we'll be hearing again from the victorious Kilkenny Hotel. But first, let's spare a thought for poor old Galway, who put up such a brave battle today. This was their reaction afterwards. They started well, then we came back, went ahead. You know, it was a lot of quick fire scores there in the first half, and we were reasonably happy at half time, four points down. But uh, maybe the first 10 minutes of the second half, we probably held the aces there. We're unfortunate with a goal that Joe Canning hit off the post. Uh, maybe a goal in the back of the net that was blown up early. So two or three chances like that. And I think Searle was very unfortunate to get sent off. It wasn't in the spirit of the match. But uh, you need to be able to take your chances when you're playing the match with Kenny. And, you know, no, we have no you know, difficulty. The best team won. But uh, it's something we want to get back to. We, we love playing here and uh, we want to be as good as they are and uh, to beat them. Your thoughts on the goal that was disallowed? Yeah, I suppose in the in, in the general run of the middle of the match, it was you know refereed very well. But uh, I suppose that time we thought the you know advantage would have been allowed, and it was blown up for maybe a foul that we thought wasn't wasn't really a foul. But that happens. That's hurling. Uh, today, you know, they got the breaks and they took them, and they deserved they deserved to win. And uh, we didn't get those breaks, and you know we're as you said chasing it after that. 
Because had that goal been allowed to stand, it could have been a, a very big turning point. Absolutely, and you know, it's certainly been on the field and had you know had those two or three incidents and Joe's one gone in. So there were goals there, and uh, look at you know, it's it's we've we've no qualms. Better team won, and they took their chances, and we were in hard luck. But we're extremely extremely proud of of our panel, of our players, and you know the bravery they've shown there, and the bravery probably of a very young side to to come so close to beating Kilkenny, and having beaten them earlier this year, and come back, uh, have you know gone very close the last day and you know again there today you know even though there was 11 points in it but probably didn't really reflect you know that it was so close at times all right it's tough obviously on the night of an all Ireland final there but in the overall broad context it's been a good year for Anthony Cunningham oh yeah like look at they're, they're starting from scratch they've built a new team they've gone for youth and they've gone very very well they've taken a Leinster title I know they'll be very very disappointed they had a game plan all year and I suppose even talking with Eddie and Don today kind of went away from it today they weren't hunting in the packs they seemed to be very flat and they weren't covering back as much they weren't playing like they were being caught were, God were being kind of outmanoeuvred the whole time but that's look at it's very hard to win an all Ireland first time in yeah. Like it's it's bittersweet tonight. They'll, they'll be very very sorry, but I think Pete God people will realise it was great to be there. But the big thing is to get back there again next year. Donald Joe Canning's famous comments. Uh, do you think they would have had any impact? Well, I suppose really, Des, they, they they mightn't have had too much of an impact, but possibly you know it might have been mentioned here and there at training and whatever else, and that it, it would be you know you know managers use these maybe at times, and it might have been used as a point like, look, we want to go out and, and prove and win this one with a bit of style and show what great sports when we are, as well as we can do it one way or the other and play it hard or play it fair. You know, it, it was probably mentioned, but it, they probably didn't make a big thing of it. All right then, let's go back then to the Victor's Hotel and rejoin Michael. All right, Des. Well, um, we are here still, of course, at City West Hotel uh, in Sagard at the Victory Do for the Kilkenny team. With me, two more heroes of the day. Just two of them here at the table, but natural fact, a van full of all Ireland medals between the two of them uh, Henry Sheffield and Tommy Walsh, lads. Congratulations to both of you for a start off. Uh, Henry, congratulations to yourself on a personal achievement today, of course. And watching the celebrations at the end, you were obviously completely thrilled with this. It still means an awful lot to you. Of course so, Michael. I think it was, a, it was a special day, I suppose. We were written off a couple of times this year and you, you love to silence your critics, first of all. But I think to uh, win nine on Ireland medals, uh, no one else in the history of hurling has ever done it. Myself and Noel to achieve that uh, feat today was a special female. And, you know, it was a major motivational fact for myself in the lead up to the match that if we got this, it was going to be special. And uh, once the final whistle went, then I, I knew I could enjoy it. And uh, I thoroughly did that. At times in the last year or two in your career, Henry, reaching that milestone might have looked a bit remote because obviously you've been through hell and back with injuries. Yeah, I suppose I, I my own personal trials, I suppose, with the injuries and stuff like that. But I always believed that I could get back there and the great thing about me is that I have men like Tommy and all the other fellas down through the years that have stood by me to contain and some of the times I've got you know the higher profile out and stuff like that but mm. because of those players and because of the management team I wouldn't have been sitting here nine times in a row so it's absolutely brilliant and uh, you know I love doing it and the, the buzz you get after a final whistle in Northern Ireland goes is something special and absolutely thrilled. Yeah. Well Tommy Watch you have experienced that of course yourself uh, on many occasions and it, it occurs to me that it's, it's not just a great triumph for, for a player involved in it but for everybody, for your family, your friends, we're here with your, your mum and dad who are across the way here and some of the family. Yeah Michael it's absolutely brilliant, um, I think down in Kilkenny uh, we absolutely love our hurling and uh, it's probably the first thing in all our lives and uh, you go back down to the, to the clubs and they'll probably be all home celebrating there tonight.